All right, now we are going to do elevator technique, different scenarios, being pushed in while you're in the elevator, but for convenience sake and so you can understand it, we're going to stop and start it so you make sure that you'll see inside the elevator and all the techniques clearly. Thank you. As you feel yourself being pushed in, look for where the elbow is, the hand that's going to choke you. Knee to the groin, kick the shin, stomp. Latch around the man's eyes. As you latch around the man's eyes, you pull. Turn, he's still fighting you. His eyes, you blind him, take away his wind, attack in the throat, quickly. Stomp on the ankles if you possibly can. If you got him down to his knees, stomp on the ankles and then make your exit out of that elevator. Push the button and make your exit out. If the door closes and you are still in, press the man's head, stomp on his ankles, make sure that the individual is not able to get up or turn around or hold you and grab you because the legs are damaged severely. If you notice, when that man rushed me, when I rotated the elbow up, because the elbow was next to my throat, and I rotated the elbow up, his face was towards me. The man never gave me an opportunity to choke him, to choke him out, to use his neck for a choke out or go for the eyes. He kept the head tucked down. So I just pressed the head, kept the head tucked down, and focused on the lower half of the body, stomping on the legs repeatedly into the rib area, leg area, keeping his head down. The second that this man would have picked his head up and exposed his neck to me, I immediately would have went for the choke. You immediately try to take away a man's wind. Stick your fingers in his nose, rip his nostrils back, rip back on the nostrils, cutting the nose from the face, or immediately blinding him, going for the eyes, because no matter what, once you attack the eyes, the first thing the man's going to do is automatically reach to pull your hands down off of his face. And while he's pulling his hands down off his face, that gives you more opportunity to focus in other areas. So you want to make sure to work the whole entire body from high to the middle area to the low area. Don't focus on just trying to punch. This is a situation, people, what I'm trying to show you with these elevator techniques is that sometimes you have to have training in different arts. If I was a boxer, there would be no way possible for me to box in that position. If I was a wrestler, I couldn't get down on the floor and start to wrestle or ground grapple. If I was a judo man, I wasn't in the position that I could throw him. If I was a taekwondo man, I couldn't kick him because there's no room to kick. The man is, once again, look at this. Where and how are you going to use your kicking skills? This is why you have to understand the importance of learning different things at different times because Right here, if I was a karate man, it did me no good. Boxer, I couldn't box. If a judo man, I couldn't set up to throw. Ground grappler, where am I going to go? Nowhere to go down there. It's too small. So I had no choice but to utilize my jujitsu skills. And once I had an opportunity to clear myself, then work on my low leg striking to break the man down. If I don't break this man down quickly, then eventually he starts moving, spinning, coming. And here we are again. I still cannot box. All I can do is set him up to use jujitsu, locks, holds, and breaks. Okay, this next scenario now is you're in the elevator. You're coming out of the elevator, and you don't know that there's someone waiting for you on the other side of that door. As you start to enter out of the elevator, the person now just shoves you back in and try to push the button to carry you up to the highest floor. This is a technique that happens more to women more so than men, okay? But it happens all the time in everyday society. Once again, you have to use the right art, the right style for the situation that you're in. Okay? And with these techniques, also, watch carefully how we start to break the body down. Break the body down. See what we got to work with and break the body down. We'll do it with and without a weapon. Okay? Elevator door open. You started out. Bang! Man shoved you. Two hands is on. Two hands is on, right here, automatically. Fingers, fingers to the eyes. As you poke the fingers to the eyes, looking in my up position, I utilize my circular motion movement. Very quickly, lock the arms in. Elbow up to the face as soon as I possibly can before the man grabs me and wiggles out. Repeated elbows to the face. Turn around, knee right into the groin. 
Now from here, sweeping the leg out again. I want to try to get this man down. Hands to the head, boom, knee him in the face. Look at how that leg is extended at this moment. Stomp right there, causing the leg to snap, hopefully, breaking the leg up. If the man reaches or grab or try to hold me in any way, you don't have to worry. You don't have to pull away and fight. Stomp. You just simply keep the strikes coming, keep the shot going, high and low, use what you can. This is called shocking, breaking a man down. I would love to be able to do something like this, okay, when he pushes me. I would love to just come in here and use a C-lock and put on a, a lock. But you notice something? When I'm trying this in that situation, it's not working. And this is our basic jujitsu technique, and this is, I'm a jujitsu man. And I'm telling you, you're not going to get the luxury of just putting this lock on and the man dropping to his knees like you've seen so many times before. you got to earn the right to get these locks on. When this man slams you into this elevator and you try grabbing for this arm to put that lock on, do what you would do naturally, please. From there, the man will just shove you all over the place and start to beat you. So you have to understand you must shock in order to get the locks. No one is going to give you anything. You got to break this person down and then if the opportunity presents itself, then take advantage of that and then try to put that lock on. Jiu-Jitsu is only good sometimes as well as other arts. It ain't the cure-all. You got to understand you learn how to be overall and break a body down. Right? So watch again. Coming out. As you're coming out, the man shoved you in. Bang. Hands go up automatically into the eye. Turn that face. So that just the face turns circular motion movement. Using my body. Elbow. Elbow repeatedly into the face. I shift. I bring my knee into the picture. I sweep his legs out, and from where his legs out, wham, I slam, I break that leg. Get that leg instead of break it, turn it, move, and I take it from that point. Okay, now, that same technique that we just got through doing, what would you do now if when that man pushed you in, he was armed with a knife? Would you just start boxing? Try to throw him? Try to grapple with him? No. You see, that right now, a whole different set of skills have to come in because you have to flow and understand and go to the situation. Not once again, I'm going to say this over and over and over in this video. This video is to show you, me, my students, your students, hopefully, that you understand that one thing and one art and one system and one practice in one way with one mindset is not good enough. We live in a Western society, totally different from the way we are classically trained, and we have to understand that and flow and train for today's society. Watch the technique now. As you're coming out, the man pushes you in. Now he's knife to your throat or your face. The hell do you do now? I couldn't go right into the eyes. Now you sliced my damn throat. See? Now I have to ask the man, yo, please, what do you want? You see, now a whole different set of skills and art come in. I have to find out what this guy is after. What's his motivation? Calm him down. He's hyper. He's excited. He knew what was going on. I didn't have no idea what was going on. I just came from my girl's house or something. I'm feeling good, right? I'm trying to walk out the elevator. Also, now I got a damn knife in my face. Whoa, what do you do? Yo, guy, calm down, please. Yo, mister, what happened? You work your way into a position where you feel comfortable. Try to get your hands up. When your hands are up, you talk to this man. Ask him what he wants. The pulling position is this way, where he's going to cut down. So nothing that I want to do, want to make that action and that motion happen. When I see this from here, although now we're going to go into a scuffle, this is where my art has to come in. I understand it. Yo, please, please, I get myself ready so I can move. Turn into my circular motion. I applied the wrist lock. As the wrist lock came over, bang, elbow to the face. He's going to try his best to cut me. I apply that lock. When you have it down here and you got the wrist lock down, you want to strike, punish, punish to the face, get it all the way down, put him in a very awkward position. Head against the elevator, wrist down, punish him. If he tries to kick, can you kick? Move that leg out, stomp his groin. Now I'm utilizing the jujitsu. Now I can just stomp. And what art is that? It's called the art of survival, street technique. Just stomp a man out, period. And that's what you would have to do. Huh? Okay, we'll flow through that again. Man approached you. And I want to make one point clear. I want to make one point clear. Understand, people, the only time you get a chance at any of this artwork, any art, the only time you will get a chance to use any art, I don't care what art you study, is if that man is not set on killing you. Because if that guy, when I come out the elevator, pushes me in and just slice my throat, and then take what I have, 
There isn't anything, anyone, any style is going to help you. So you better hope that this man is just set on robbery and not murder. Okay? With that, we'll pick up. Pushes you in. Once again, get your hand up here. Find out what he wants. He's going to be asking you, telling you to do whatever. Yo, calm down. Yo, here. Yo, here. Yo, relax. God, please. Just remember not to pull down. Turn. When you turn in, shock as quick as you can while you're putting on your wrist though. You have to use circular motion movement. Turn. Get the man going. Cody guys, take that wrist down. Bang. Back to the face. Back to the face. Back to the face. Stop. Kick it. Do not let go of that wrist because if you let go of that wrist, he may slice your knee and stab you up in your groin. You understand? And you wouldn't want that to happen. So therefore, control the hand with the knife until it's gone. And punish. Stomp. Then throw that wrist down. Boom. Stomp on that hand. And as quick as you can, push that button to exit out of that elevator. Okay, this is a situation where there's more than one person in the elevator at one time. Normally, the guy with the suit is the one who will stay. But for technique's sake, I just want to show you, show it how it's going. you would flow. Try to flow this. Notice, now the guy that suits, person, one person get off. Now... When one person left the elevator, the first thing a person does is push the button so the elevator can start up again to go back down to their floor, and they look up. They never pay attention to the guy behind them, or most of the time the people on the side of them. They don't do this and look to see who's behind them. They just push the button, look up, doors close, wait for them, now elevator to leave. Now take a scenario that the elevator closed. Now you and this guy's in the elevator, and all of a sudden now while you're looking up, there goes your chokehold. Come from behind. What do you do now? Once again, a man choked you? Here. Can't throw him because the doors are closed. So judo is out. Okay, you can't box him because you have no room in distance. You can't kick because there's nothing to kick. Okay? Once again, elevator door is closed. What can you do from here realistically? This is what we have to uh, approach. Now, man choked you up, knocked you up. You have seconds. Seconds now to work. Because a guy like this chokes you out and starts wringing that neck. You're out. You are out. A good safety tip. This is a safety tip that I've used many a time. When you push that button and you and someone else is in the elevator, either you make that person feel uncomfortable by turning your back and to the elevator door and just staring at that person so you cover yourself if you're not sure, or push the button and stand to the side. So this way, if they have to attack you or want to attack you, he makes his motion. Now you can react quickly and you can approach it from a frontal point of view as opposed to this. People's safety, awareness is one of the key issues. But now let's go back to the technique. Man chokes you up from behind, boom, starts to apply that choke. This is your immediate response. He's going to grab and try to help yourself out to get yourself a little bit of win. As you're doing this immediately, Still push with your butt, try to break balance. Immediately try to break balance. Stop and shift your body. He'll still be choking you. He'll still be ringing you out. Now you attack with the eyes, and then you snatch it from behind. Hey, Get the inside thigh. Get that thigh motion moving from here. Then you slide out, and now we go into a fight. Because from here, from here, it's going to be a battle. Once he's ringing you down, and you slid this, and you, and you slid that hand out. Right here, palm, face, striking, movement, back. And if you have to stay in the elevator with this guy because it's still moving up, go for the hand. Hey. Put that finger lock on. Put that come along hole on to make sure he stays it's in that on. same place. Don't just continue to fight him because eventually he may work his way up or you may find yourself in a battle, in a scuffle. You don't want to get into no scuffle. You notice these techniques ain't no one, two, three, cut and clean. Clear technique is not going to be like that, people. The way you practice in the dojo and the way it is in the street, it's two different things completely. So let's get real here. Once again, you're looking up. Now choke you. Hold on a little bit to get that balance. Use that butt. Use that butt to pull it out. Stomp, stomp the feet out. Shove your body to the side. Come around. Yes. Get that thigh. Slide out. Boom. Palm. Strike it. Strike it. Look. Groin open. Bang. Hold that hand. Put yes. that finger lock on. Hold it there until the man, the door's open. Once the door's open, don't play no games. Don't try to do this. Nah. Put no come along home like we do in the dojo. And you figure you're going to stand there and wait with this guy? Hell no. He's down. You put that finger nice. to the ground. Put that lock on. When them doors open up, you back out slowly. 
boom, kick him in his teeth, and you run like hell. Okay, now this technique will show the reversal of the one before, where the man was in front, where the man, that you were in front of the man looking up, and he choked you from behind, caught you with your neck up looking up. Now the man will be in front of you, and he'll just turn and spin and put you automatically into a choke hole or grab you, shove you, and we'll take it from that point of view. Okay? Now, once again, individuals are in front of you. One may get off. I'll talk to you later, my brother. Okay, see you later. All right. Well, you get... Where's the money? Where's the money? Okay. Give me the now money. the man chokes. He got you in a choke hole. What do you do from this point? Now he's got you in that choke hole. What could you do? You understand? Very few seconds is all you have. From this point when he's grabbing you in the throat, once again, people, choke holes are very easy. When a man a, a, grabs your throat, concept, the concept of Vijitsu, the concept of our system, two hands or one hand is occupied. If he's not punching you in your face with that other hand, he has to be holding you with that other hand. He has to be searching you with that other hand. Two hands are occupied. Now let's get to some concept here. Two hands occupied, you got your two hands free and your two legs free. So now when that situation happened, when he slammed you and choked you from here, thumb to the eye, get the motion going. Shot to the face, shot to the face, shot to the groin, boom, push it. Now automatically, I go for my arm bar if I have it. While I got the arm bar on, I'm not trying to be stylish. I got the balance broken, arm bar is halfway on, he's going to resist me. Watch the leg. The leg must come out. Once the leg comes out, that's it. Man is on the ground. When the man is on the ground, once again, ankles, snap. Snap them ankles, snap them ankles. Hold on to that other, jump up and stomp him in his face. Do what you have to do. This may not be pretty, but it's necessary. Good, so let's try that again, all right? Yes. Okay? Man turn, put that right, choke on. Give me your money. Thumb it to the eye. Shot, 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 shot. Going. Look at that leg. Pull it. Okay? Look at the hand I'm holding. Once again, I go into my finger lock. I got my arm ball. I got the thumb. I got the pinky to stop with. And also, snap. Legs. Break it. Break it. Break it. And if the elevator has something you can support yourself on, jump up, hold on it, and boom, stop that man with everything you have, your whole body weight, right in the head, or on top of them legs. Very important that you look for what we call the floating hand. The hand is just in the air, floating. It could happen at this point. Yes. See, the hand is floating. He may now try to punch you. Come back. See? Head butt. Pull up. Knee. Eyes. Throat. Blood. Hit. Hit. Shot. It could happen when you did yes. this from this point. The hand is floating. You take advantage of the head, circular motion. Look at that groin. Shot, head of Bam, punches. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Here. Now, look, the hand is floating. I now have to go for it and apply life. It's not going to come to me. The man's not going to say, I'll stick your arm out, please, so I could put my lock on. While you're in the pursuit of shocking and that hand comes up, that's the floating hand. This is the floating hand. You then now take it and apply your locks. Take it and apply your brake. Boom, hit, shot, elbow, move, your wrist lock. Bang, kick to the groin. You now have to look to see whatever you can get. But like I always say, you have to earn the right to put a technique on. Nobody in the elevator is going to look at you and go, Hoss. step back, reverse punch, please, and give you their arm to work. Us? This is a situation that happened to a person who I know. We were coming down in an elevator, not knowing that the person in the elevator, his buddy was waiting on the ground floor for them when they were coming downstairs. When that person got, came in, when that elevator door opened, boom, two of them pushed this person in the elevator and then went to take advantage of them, went on to rape the person and then, you know, rob them, rape them, pushed up push you a little bit back up to the roof, and then do what they wanted to do, okay? So what we're going to do is reenact that situation. What could you do from a situation like that if it's two people in the elevator? If they got weapons, people, it's difficult. You, may have to, you might have to wait until they cab you out of the elevator. It'll be more safe, especially if both of them have weapons in such a close quarter. 
I don't care what you know. It ain't helping you at that point in time unless you really have to go for it. And you have no choice. They're going to do you in that elevator. But if they're going to carry you somewhere, it may be a little bit wiser for you to be patient and see where they carry you or if you have a little bit more room to operate. If there's weapons. If there's empty hand and it's just intimidation going on, just straight out robbery, you don't see a weapon, go for it. They might have it inside their waist. It doesn't matter. They'll never get it out once your technique is correct and proper. Okay? So now we're going to take it from the point of one, is, one person is in. Elevator might have opened up on one of the floors, not the ground floor, maybe even the ground floor. Boom, all of a sudden there's two people in that elevator. Now, they play it off for a half a second, and now boom, it hits you. It's a nearly Just give me money, man. Okay, one person starts searching, one person holding you up. What do you do? You gotta understand, you're in a position now, well watch this. This guy grabbed you, look at how he grabbed me. Control the hand here, here. This is a fight. Can't throw this man. You can't punch. Only thing you can do is use your legs and push off. You are going to have to fight for every single thing you get in this position right here. While this man has his hands in your pocket, that is the best time to strike. Because why? His two hands are occupied. From this point here, you can push him off. This guy is going to be choking you. Now you have to start move elbow, shift, turn, constantly utilize, lock and brakes, try to keep... This man yes, uh, in front of this man constantly with technique so you can, boom, work your way out of that elevator. If you notice, I took this man into a finger lock and I pressed him into this other man. As I pressed him into this other man here, now that guy was trying to get his way around. As he was trying to get his way around, boom, I caught the groin. The groin strike was there. I still have this man in a finger lock. I am working for every single thing I get. All right? Thank you. Good. Okay.